Hello everybody. Well, we've been uh, going through the various aspects of healing now, the healing gifts. I talked about healing in general and I spoke about physical healing pretty much last time. But you know, we're not only physical, we also are mental, emotional, and spiritual people. And I want to talk about mental and emotional uh, healing right now. And I'm just going to say something uh, very bluntly, you know, the truth sets us free. So mental healing has to deal with how we think, how we perceive things. I mean, even rational emotive therapy gives you the whole idea that uh, what, whatever you're thinking, whatever you perceive has a great effect in your emotions. You know, if I walk outside and I, I, I perceive that there's somebody behind the bush with a knife, uh, my emotions are going to uh, be triggered to be fearful. So how we think about things bring about fear, and also how we think about things can bring about uh, healing of fear. Now, let's be very honest with, with you. You know, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. There is no talk about mental health without incorporating some kind of spirituality into the whole uh, equation. There's no way that someone can be on earth and mentally uh, healthy and happy and balanced thinking that this world is all that we have and then we pass into obliv oblivion and uh, we're totally destroyed and we cease to exist. Um, really, uh, that's just something that just brings despair upon people. If I have to live only for this life and that's, that's, that's it, uh, it's going to be a pretty empty, difficult life because this life is the, the veil of tears. I mean, there's a lot of, life is hard. Life is very difficult. But the gospel comes and presents beautiful things to us. Paul saying, I consider the sufferings of the present moment as nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed within us. Paul, you know, he was stoned and drug away and, and he doesn't know. It might have been a near-death experience. I don't know, but he was caught up in the third heaven. I know a man 14 years old, 14 years old, 14 years ago uh, that, that uh, he was caught up into the third heaven and and he came back and he was talking about himself and he said, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, has even dawned on man or woman the beautiful things that God has prepared for those who love him. Uh, he had such a profound experience of, of, of the Lord and words were spoken to him that he can't even repeat because the other side is so much better. Uh, and you know, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. You don't have to be afraid. He says, you will suffer in the world. I solemnly assure you, but take courage because I have overcome the world. And so when we, with the gifts of healing, uh, the main thing is we, we start to think right. We start to realize that we're God's sons and daughters. We start to realize that even though we're, we have sinned, we can be forgiven. This truth sets us free. We realize that no matter how difficult our life is, it's going to come to an end, and then we're going to have an eternity of total happiness and love and joy before us. Uh, no matter how happy our life is, it's going to get even infinitely better and never end. Either way, with Christ, we're a winner. So again, the truth sets us free. And, you know, Paul t writes to Timothy, he says, uh, the, the spirit that God has given you is no cowardly spirit, but the one that makes us dunamis, strong, uh, loving, uh, from agape, and wise. And the, another way to translate wise is mentally sound, mentally sound. Um, they're, they're, I, I've known people that have been kind of off the wall and then when they have a, a, a true encounter with Christ, and maybe I'm talking about myself here, when they have a true encounter with Christ, uh, everything changes. They get a sense of focus. They know who they are. They know why they're here. They know where they're going. So the gospel is a great gift of healing. So when we preach the gospel, we, people hear the gospel, the joy of the gospel fills them, and, and so they, they get right thinking, like rational emotive therapy, they get right thinking, and then after getting right thinking, uh, their emotions follow. But I want to tell you something, there, there's been times in my life where mentally and emotionally, I was in such a bad way, in such a bad state, that I said, I can't get out of this. There have been a few times where I, I just literally said, Jesus, I can't handle this. I cannot do this. I feel like it's all in closing in. I feel like I'm almost condemned. I feel like I'm not, not, not morally condemned, but I just feel fear is overcoming me and anxiety is overcoming me. And I, I, I just, how do I get out of this? And I help. I surrender. Surrender, by the way, is the big key 
to receiving healing. Just as I surrender. I can't do this. Even in AA, you know, we've come to admit our lives are, are uh, you know, out of control and, and unmanageable. And we, we surrender to the higher power in Christianity. That's Jesus. That's the Spirit of God. You know, and there's times where I have been in that state. And, 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 and right there, even directly, without anybody praying over me, the Holy Spirit came upon me with such, it was like warm oil just pouring over my whole being. My, even my thoughts straightened out. And, 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 and all of a sudden, I couldn't think my way out of it, though. I needed something greater than me to get me out of that. And that is the gift of the Holy Spirit. When you come to the Lord with your fear, with your depression, with your anxiety, you know, open your heart to him and say, come on in, Jesus. I can't do this. And when we surrender to him, um, he starts to get our thinking in the right direction. And when our thinking is the right direction, our emotions go in the right direction. Now, let's be blunt here. Um, you know, there's chemical things that go on, uh, you know, we, when we have mood swings between, you know, uh, being way up here and then way down here. And, and there's, there's, there's schizophrenia. There's, there's, there's you know, certain well, things, pathologies. There's a, abnormal psychology, we call it where people are really struggling with things. And you might need some medication. You might need to go in. But uh, I have also uh, seen very clearly that, that with proper awareness of the gospel and solid grasping and faith of the gospel, many people have been delivered from incredible anxiety and depression. And sometimes Jesus says, I was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and I was so anxious and so seeing all the sins of the world that I had to take on myself. I sweat blood. I said, Father, if it be possible, you know, my heart is sorrowful to the point of death. If you can get me out of this, this would be great. But not my will, but your will be done. I mean, sometimes, you know, we have to embrace our humanity. And, and sometimes we have the healing isn't that we get over it, but we embrace it. And we say, this is part of my life. And it's not going to last forever. So to come to an acceptance of who we are is another great healing. But no, I've, I've prayed with people. I remember one time even driving around with a friend of mine who was really in straits. He was at that, he was at that point where you couldn't think your way out of it. And uh, as we were driving, I just felt so much compassion. And I just said a little prayer, just, just a quiet little prayer. I said, Lord, you know, you are the God of the universe. He said, my, my mind feels so fragmented right now. I, I'm just so anxious. I, I, just, I just can't even get it together. And I said, a quiet prayer. I said, Lord, you're the God of the universe. You, you rule the moon, the sun, and the stars, and the smallest molecules. Just a quiet little prayer. I said, I just ask that you would pour forth your grace upon my son, the grace of the Holy Spirit upon your son right now. In Jesus' name, heal him. And he just went, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. I can't believe it. it. Just the power of the Holy Spirit came upon him. And I have felt this at key moments in my life. And, uh, you know, ask the gospel today that I read. But ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened to you. What father is there among you when you ask for, um, you know, a, a fish will give you a snake? How much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? And when the Holy Spirit comes, what is it? It's not the Holy Spirit's not a spirit. Uh, a, a cowardly spirit or one of timidity, but one that makes us courageous or strong, loving and wise or mentally healthy. Wow, where there is the spirit, there is courage, there is dunamis, there's power, there's love, agape, there's wisdom, there's mental health, wherever the spirit is invited in. Um, uh, yes, indeed. Yeah, we have to use good counseling. We have to be open to any medications that might help. But to be honest with you, um, a lot of times, intense prayer, I and mean, I do a holy hour every day, and then in the evening, I do about an hour of spiritual reading and, and thought, because I don't do that so that I can flourish. I do that so I can survive. You know, it, it, If we don't pray and draw near to God, we, we're not going to do very well. And you know, it, it, we say in Our Father, give us this day our daily bread. It's just not physical bread. It's mental bread, it's emotional bread, it's spiritual bread. In other words, feed us and give us what we need so that we can keep a, a, a steadiness in our life. And uh, so, you know, and you know, sometimes when the Holy Spirit comes upon me and I feel this healing, the mental, emotional healing, I say, let me just stay here. Lord, I don't, oh, oh okay, this is, I, I'm at the most peace I felt in a long time. Let me just stay here. But you know what? Every day, some anxieties and depressions can come. Every day, challenges can come. And, you know, in, in the desert, in, in Exodus, he gave them daily manna. 
He wants us, he just doesn't want to give us a big barn full of, of manna and feed us and then we're done. He wants us to come to him and rely on him and open our hearts up to him. Um, I, I wrote in my journal one time, I, I heard the Lord speaking. You know how you can hear him speak in prayer. We've talked about that. I heard him, I was thinking about uh, times in my life, character faults and anxieties and, and difficulties in my life where, where it was really difficult. And, and, and I heard the Lord say, you know, he, he gave me the sense of when I die and I come into his presence. And, and I think he, when I come into his presence, he's going to say, oh, my son, I'm so ready to have you come into heaven. And I'm going to review your life. And, you know, those times where you encountered even sin and character flaws and weaknesses and anxieties and all sorts of, of, uh, of, of struggle. It's not in spite of those things that you're here in heaven now. It's because of those things. I know from my life, uh, I went through a time in seventh grade that was very anxious. I went through a few other times that were very anxious. And you know what? If I was not humbled and if I didn't come into the state of being kind of uh, humbled and broken before God, I might have been so full of myself that I wouldn't have turned to God. I wouldn't have found salvation. Sometimes it's precisely uh, after the hardest times that we come into the most spiritually enlightened times because it's in our hardest times where we really seek knock and ask the Lord. It's in those difficult times that we really say, God, you are God and I am not and I need you. So I think this is really the core to emotional healing and, uh, and inner healing. I got more to say about inner healing, but we're going to just stop there and say, if you pray every day, the Lord will give you daily manna and, and he who will give you the truth that sets you free. You know, a lot of times he will speak the truth that sets you free. I'm not a big journaler. I don't want to, but I have 10 volumes out because I come to the Lord sometimes with problems and anxieties and I, and I talk, I pour my heart out to him. It says in the scripture, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. I do that every day and then I'm quiet. And then guess what? The manna comes. He speaks a word. He gives a direction and you go, oh yes. And then... That's so good, I have to write it down, Lord, because I know it's not me, I know it's him. So um, I would encourage you, before anything, when you talk about mental, emotional healing, enter into deep, daily committed prayer, and he will give you manna, he will heal you, he will bless you. In that silence, in that solitude, he will snuggle with you, he will, he will direct you, he will really do great things. So let's start there, and then, when we are healed and blessed, we go out and we pray with other people, and we help them. So this is the gift of healing. It all starts again with that first gift, those first gifts of interior conversations with the Lord. So Lord, we give you our mental uh, wrong thinking, our anxious thinking, our depressed thinking. We give you um, our, our emotions. And we ask you, Lord, to give us manna, feed us, bless us, help us, heal us, and help us embrace our humanity when we don't have it all together and say, that's okay. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.